All right. So thank you everyone for being here. Um, this is uh, Hair Tutorial. I'm going to go through the tools. I'm going to go through all the products that we need to make your hair look just like Superman. Now, before I get started, I want to say not everyone's hairstyle is going to match exactly what I'm doing for my hair right now. I have straight and wavy hair, and my bangs and the rest of my length it goes from about to my eyelids right to where my eye starts from the front because I need to have enough length for the curl. And then slowly and slowly get shorter towards the back to where the sides and the very back are both about maybe an inch or so. So I have to pull them back and form a nice duct tape. So that's something to keep in mind. For those of you that have hair and uh, for those of you that want to buy wig and style a wig, um, I do have people in mind to help with that. But right now I'm just going to focus on straight and wavy hair. But I will try to find some other Superman of mine to help you with your own tutorials. But I just want to let you know I haven't forgotten about you. Um, so anyway, uh, let's get started, everybody. I'm going to start off by just listing off the tools that you need, and I'm going to start off by reading off the products that you're going to be able to use. So first and foremost, I use a round blow-dry brush. I use this a lot. This is one of my favorite tools. It's very good for not only um, smoothing, outing, smoothing out your hair, excuse me, but you can also roll it while you comb through your hair with a brush. And being able to roll it helps because it's, your hair is a part of your body, you see? And the more you actually work with your hair, the more you're essentially training or building a relationship with your hair. So being able to turn this brush helps a lot. It also gives value. We have a large teeth comb. Okay, now uh, this comb is very handy for details and also helping for structure. There are many styles of Superman where they like to see the pinstripes and they like to see the comb teeth marks on the side of the pompadour or the back. They want to be able to see the lines and they want to see it all measured out and very appropriate and parallel to each other. So a good comb like this will help you do that. The third thing that we're going to use is a soft bristle brush. I don't have the label for this guy anymore, but this was made with boar, okay? It's very soft, it's for wavy hair, and this is again, just for smoothing out details. When we're done with the top and on the sides, towards the last step, we're gonna be using this the most. Now, this is an optional tool. Um, I, you don't have to have this. You can make it work with the other three. Technically, you can use the first two. You don't even need the brush, but this fourth one is extremely optional. It's just a very small, precision detailed styling brush. It's much like the white one, except uh, the white one just has larger teeth and they're farther apart, okay? And I apologize, I used these yesterday for a test run, so that's simply hair gel, I promise. But this is a brand new comb, I bought it yesterday. Um, so there we go. Uh, like I said, these two, you can make your hair work with these two. But if you wanna just get some extra details down, this one and this one are definitely gonna help you. Okay, so let me show you all the products and then we'll get straight into step one. I'm going to show you guys these in the order that we're actually going to be using these, okay? So first, we have mousse. Mousse is very important because it volumizes. This one in particular, I found one that has sunscreen. I'll get in the importance of why hair needs to have some UV protection later. Um, but you need maximum hold and you need to make sure it volumizes. And secondly speaking, make sure it's for straight or wavy hair. Do not get curling mousse. You will not be happy with it. We're going to use this right away. Our next product is protein styling gel. Now protein styling gel comes in many names and brands and there's different kinds, but everyone knows generically what this tub looks like. Um, it comes in gray, black, blue, all sorts of different colors. Um, but the material itself, let me pop this guy open so you can see in here, okay? This batch happens to be clear. I recommend no white. Do not get white. That also goes for pomades and wax. Try to get clear or a darker color like a blue or a tinted green or a brown or even black if you can find black. The protein styling gel works really, really well 
for your hair. Uh, this is going to be towards step two. And essentially, there are other types of protein styling gel out there. There are some that have olive oil. There are some that have argan oil. There's even different types of gel that aren't even called protein styling gel. As long as you're not getting uh, a glue with extreme hold, you should be able to use it as gel and it should work well for you. Just make sure with gel that your hair is exactly what, make sure it's the right kind for your hair. If you get the wrong type of product, you're gonna regret it later. It also goes for anyone who's allergic to things too. Always read the ingredients. Now the third product is beeswax. We essentially don't have to get Murray's beeswax, but for me, I love this stuff. It's black on the inside and um, you only need just that much. Uh, you can get pomade, you can get paste, you can get um, a whole bunch of other things that work the same as wax. But again, as I said, make sure that it's really good condition, it holds well, and do not get white. We have a classic here, everyone knows this product. This is a hairspray. Right now I just have Suave, but any hairspray will do. And scented, I definitely prefer unscented. Now, this is extremely generic, just a maximum hold of 10, but I've gotten Tresemme before, uh, I've gotten Aquanet. As long as a hairspray, again, make sure it works for you. But something that I do recommend that I was gonna say that we'll talk about later is climates and heat. If you have mousse, gel, or any product that can help with UV protection, I would definitely say get it. Um, there are even some hairsprays like Tresemme that have a hair product called Climate Control. So that's very good for the Superman celebration, especially with all that heat. You wanna make sure that your hair cannot move and it doesn't retain any sweat and lose its style. Our last product is gonna be serum. It is, um, most, most people call it Shine Serum. Garnier, they call it Brilliant Shine Glossing Spray. Essentially, through all the products that we're gonna to use today, if you noticed, most of them either have really good hold or hold and shine. What the spray will do is after we're all done, this is gonna keep that shine from deteriorating. Because when you're done styling your hair, it looks great, it looks slick and wet, and it's not going anywhere, and it's beautiful. But give it a few hours of cosplay or some heat, and you're losing your gloss. That's where this comes in, okay? It'll be great, this will be our finishing touch. So um, without further ado, we're getting, we're gonna get into step one. Now, I'm gonna try to look over towards the phone as much as I can so you can see the front of my face right here. But I'm gonna be looking at this mirror as much as I can as well. So if you need me to turn a little bit, if you just want me to kind of look over so I can see, if you need to see what I'm doing, unmute yourself, say something, please let me know. Don't worry about it. Okay, so step one, we have to dampen our hair. Now my hair is already a little damp, but just for the sake of effect, we're gonna dampen our hair anyway. The mousse will work best if the hair is already wet or damp. So we're just gonna take some lukewarm water, or cold, doesn't matter, and we're gonna spin the brush as I'm, we're literally spinning it as I run water on it. I want water to go everywhere. These are soft bristle brushes, so make sure you don't get metal. And as you can see, I am literally, I'm spinning it as I turn. The hair is right now just natural with water in it only. Okay, technically we have six products with the water, but um, we're gonna do this just lightly. We want the hair to get ready for the mousse and you're gonna see me following the pattern of my hair almost every time I put something in it that isn't my own hands for product. As much as I can, we're gonna keep the hair exactly where we want it to go. Also, a little trick that I learned, if you have a big appearance in the morning or in the afternoon, go ahead and do a practice run the night before. Don't use as much hair product and then sleep in your hair. Wash it, clean it, and then style it again. The muscle memory from last night will still hold and your hair will be able to spring back better. I know that sounds kind of crazy, but it really does work. Styling your hair more than once after cleaning it within a certain amount of time frame, your hair will be a lot easier to control. So even with just water right now, we're at a very good spot and we're ready to put in some mousse. Now, some of you are thinking, hairspray and we're done. Well, um, we have a long way to go. So I'm gonna show you exactly where these details come in and I'll try to get in a little close so you can see what marks I'm making in my hairline, okay? So, 
time for the moose. For the moose, this is very important. For my part, I have the part on the end of my left eye, okay? So we have a third of my hair over here and two thirds of my hair over here. That's exactly what we have to do when we apply it to our hands. Apply just a small amount. It's gonna foam up a lot, so you won't need as much. It's probably gonna foam up more than you need, but we can get rid of that on the back of the hair. So now this is what I have on my hand right now. This is how much you're gonna usually add, okay? If everyone looks up, I'm taking just a third of it. So that's what I have for the, the big part of my head and the little part. We're just gonna add it in. Leave it on top, do nothing else. Literally, just leave it on top. It's like Bob Ross in a mountain. It'll take away what it wants. You're gonna hear a lot of Bob Ross references in here, but hey, whatever works. Okay, so now that we have this in our hair, we're gonna use our fingers now. Um, we're not really gonna use our fingers' fingers, but more our fingertips, okay? Much like a metal comb for volume, we're gonna do that to work in the moose. And again, we're following the same pattern that I want my hair to be styled in. Your hair is attached to follicles, which is attached to your skin, to your bone and muscle, and the rest of your body. Your hair can work with you. You just have to learn what it needs to do. All right, so our mousse is worked in, and uh, we have a pretty good amount in there. Um, I actually have a little bit more hair that's longer than I'd like, so I wasn't, I didn't have any extra. I didn't have to worry about moving some of the back of my hair. Um, step one is pretty easy. It doesn't take much. The middle steps are a little harder, so that work is tricky. And step two, we have to put in some of the styling gel. Now that we already have our hair kind of where we want it to go, we just have to worry about details. We have to be able to hold it there. So the same thing as for the moose, except we're going to put it in differently. Okay, so two thirds to a third. You got some over here. Oh, here, let me show you how much you need. You don't need as much for that. The amount that's on my hand is maybe the size of a 50, uh, 50 cents coin. Okay, about twice as big as a golden dollar. Just take a little bit for the small side of your part and we're gonna just put it on top. We are gonna run our fingers completely through it. And the weight of this is going to put your hair down. As you see, it's doing with me now. Don't fret, it is supposed to do that. Okay, so now is where we get our hands, rub them together everywhere, and let's get in there. This is the part where we want the hair gel and the product to literally go everywhere. Every encompassing part of our do should have the hair gel in it. You don't want to use a lot, you just want enough to just get through every strain of your hair. You might have to go in and get a little bit more, that's okay. This one actually has a pop top, so it's very, very convenient that I don't have to open it and get my hands dirty all over the case, all over. And I'm only grabbing half as much as last time, so it wasn't much at all. And again, if your hair's longer, you're gonna to have to go in just for a little bit more. That's okay. And while we're doing this, our hair is still damp. The way we add the products is we're gonna keep the hair damp as much as possible through the entire process. And then when it's finally starting to dry, that's when we use our shine. All right, now I have left on the back. So I'm gonna show you guys, if you have some hair back here, what do you do with that ducktail? How do you make it look like a ducktail? So I have a little bit of film of the gel left. Hopefully I turn around in the right spot. You're literally just bringing it in. The back of your hair, you're going to find that this is extremely convenient for getting rid of excess anything, whether it's spray, wax, whatever. It'll be very good to just get rid of it back there because you don't have a lot of control or comb marks and uh, it'll be easier to hide, so to speak. Now, something that I didn't mention, you're gonna make sure that you want to have a washcloth right next to your sink the whole time because you're gonna be wiping off your hands a lot. Dirty hands mean dirty products and dirty tools, and that means you have to clean them all over again. So keeping your hands clean helps keep your products and your tools clean. Oh, oh party foul, we're good. Okay, 
So now that we've applied the gel, we have to put our hair back to the way it was. So we're going to go back to our round brush. What the loose thread from the first step was it set up the ability for the gel to do its job without working way too hard, without having to hold up your hair. The mousse basically acted as a support. Because right now, the mousse is doing its job. It's holding its weight, and my hair isn't sliding down, okay? And that's it. We're gonna do the rest with the comb now. Before we add the wax in step three, we have to make sure we get our details in. So for step two, you're gonna see a little bit more tool use. Now, me personally, I like to hold this comb upside down because you can actually come right around all the way continuously to your ducktail. One complete move. So it makes it a lot easier and you save yourself some time. It's just one motion. And when you're doing this motion, make sure that your hair is actually being shaped in the right way. So apply pressure here, but apply light pressure here. You want it to literally come to a straight line from your head. See what I mean? Now we'll do this side. There we go. Now the ducktail is going to be a little uh, uneven back there, so with the large teeth brush, the large toothbrush, just the large teeth brushes, the comb, excuse me, is the easiest way to form your ducktail. Okay, so it has large teeth, it has a wide surface area, and the back of your hair doesn't need much, much else work. Now, before we continue with um, step three for the beeswax and shaping our spit curl, um, I want to show you guys a trick for the front of the pompadour. Now, if you're noticing, the front of the coif is really, really good. We have some height and some body, and it's blending in very well. But whenever we comb back, we actually have to learn it. We have to make sure that it doesn't go back with the rest of our hair. Because if you look at the top, most of the time, we don't pay attention to the top of our hair. But we're gonna give that a little attention today. As you can see, I'm just holding the comb very lightly. And I'm following the same pattern from the top of my hair, okay? Now, even though this is gonna ruin the body, we're gonna use our hand and we're gonna push it right back into place. Let me bring this back around to the ducktail, okay? So we're gonna push this up just like this. I'm over-exaggerating, it's, we're pushing up just like that. Whenever we get our beeswax in, it's gonna hold that up even more because the first thing to go is the front of your pompadour whenever it gets hot, especially the curl. Okay, so that is just perfect. I was getting ready to talk about that and I already had one come down on his own. Okay, so it is time for step three. Now, if you notice, right at the end of step two, I had a hair fall down and I smiled. This little guy right here, can everybody see him? The layer that came down, okay. I call that a volunteer. Now, sometimes you're not gonna get a hair that comes down on its own for your spit curl, and sometimes you're gonna have to fish one out for yourself. So I'm gonna tell you exactly where to look for one. Um, actually, hold on a second. See, this one actually came down the wrong spot. So I'm glad I found it anyway. Let me just smooth him back in and put him back in. Okay. Now, if we don't have a volunteer like what just happened, we're gonna have to get one on our own. So as I said earlier, the part, we go on the end of our eye, or some people go directly above their pupil. For, our, for the spit curl, it's going to be at the middle of the opposite eye. So right above our right eye, since I'm parting from my left, I'm just gonna come in right here, and I'm gonna pull down, say right about here. We want it to be able to come down and literally form the bottom half of the letter S. Now, feel free to grab a few hairs. You want it to make sure it's thick enough that people can see. So you don't get a lot, but get enough. 
This is usually how thick you want your spit curl to be. For the sake of the video, we're just going to make it a little bit thicker so everyone can get a really good view at it. Okay, there we go. Now, before we get into the spit curl, um, you are going to have to maintain a little bit and just go back and fix something if it falls because we haven't finished adding the wax or the spray. So our hair still has a little bit of leeway to move. So my favorite tool for fixing things is, again, our trusty round brush. I have loose hair here, and a couple of these are falling down. So we're just going to go back in, push that right back up, and putting our fingers on the curl. Because we took away the curl, we have some hairs that was out of place anyway. So always keep that hair to the side and make sure you don't pull it along with your brush whenever you put your pompadour back in place. That is very, very important because you find something that works, you ruin your work, you may not be able to get that hand, you may not be able to get that strand of hair all over again. And then you're going to be mad at me. Okay. So we're ready to work on our curl now. Just a little bit of, see like I said, my hair's a little long, so you won't have to do this if your hair's short enough. I just gotta fix those sides again. For the beeswax, this is a little bit tricky. You don't need that much. Um, we're gonna add some to the roots and to the front of our hair before we add some to the spit curl itself. So, and this is the messy part I was talking about. You literally just need enough to put on your fingers, okay? Um, the, the dab that I grabbed, it was about the size of a small grape, okay? That's about all you need. No palms, fingers only. I cannot stress that enough. We're using our four fingers on each hand. We're stopping right at that knuckle joint where it turns into the palm, okay? This is what your hand should look like with the wax or the pomade on. Now beeswax is a lot thicker, so other pomades or waxes are gonna be thinner than this, but as long as they have the hold, they'll do the same thing. Now what we're gonna do with this is we're just gonna follow the pattern of our hair again, but we're gonna basically give everything some insurance. So the sides, we're gonna have the hand on our side with the fingers. We're just gonna pull up a little bit. Just in front. Just a little in front. Now we're going to go and do the same thing. Rub your fingers back together. Make sure they're both even again with the wax, okay? On the sides. Basically start at the root, okay? And then pull back to the sides. Now it's very important to make sure that they are on your fingertips. So you can take your fingertips and run them along the sides of your hairline, like so. Like that. Now you're wondering, what are we gonna do with all this extra wax? That's what the ducktail is for. So take your hands, run them through the back of your hair. If you still have some gel and it's still pretty damp back there, you will soak up a lot of beeswax. And that'll even be, that will be even another thing that will keep the back of your hair in check. See, look how straight that is. And the quaff is still pretty tall. So we're doing really well. Now, we're going to have to wash our hands all over again. Good night. Sorry, someone else is saying good night. I'm not going to do the, I'm not going to do a whole washer. If you have your washcloth, you could usually just use most of the washcloth to get the beeswax off. The beeswax will definitely take a while to get off your hands. That's why you don't need a lot. If you get too much on, you're going to be sitting there washing your hands for a long time. So, okay, now it's time for the curl. We're going back into our beeswax. Now for the curl, we only need a very, very, very small amount. Even less than what we did for the roots and the sides of our hair. Here, let me get rid of that. Thank you, sorry. Okay, so this one for the curl, I'm going to say the dot on your finger that you make with it. You don't need to stand, you don't need it to be, uh, to stand up a little bit. You just need like a little flat surface on your fingertip. It's about the size of an M&M or a Skittle. That's all you need, just a little bit. Okay, so you're going to run 
your fingers together. So now we have a thumb and an index finger. For the shape of the curl, the curl actually already has some mousse and some hair gel in it. So that's to our advantage because what we can do is we can set this up and lay it exactly where we want it to be. Make sure they're all in the same direction. Taking your fingers like so and just kind of using your fingers to brush out the curl keeps all the hairs lined up together, keeps them from uh, coming apart. Now the S curl, I'm gonna over exaggerate, but it's gonna come up and around. What we're essentially doing is we are taking a classic Superman C type of curl and we're changing its mind at the last minute. That's how we make the S curl, okay? So I'm actually gonna put the beeswax on while it's still shaped like a C, just to show you guys what I'm talking about. I'm gonna hold it here and pull down. I'm holding at the top and I'm pulling down. Now by holding at the top and pulling down, we're actually naturally creating a fold. If you could see that. Now we're going to go up because we have to make sure that the root itself gets some. So we're going to hold the spit curl, literally, we're going to hold it up and we're going to apply it to the bottom of it just like we did with our fingers and our quaff. Now, this is the tricky part. Take the tip of your curl with your hand. We're gonna turn it, okay? We're literally gonna turn it and move it around our finger. So I'm using the right index finger as a point for a structure of my curl. See me wrap it around it, wrapping around it, add some pressure, and let go. Now that doesn't look so good, but when we move it around a little bit, it's gonna look perfect. What we just need to do now is literally create folds and curves while the wax is doing its job. So as you can see, I just turned it, okay? So you're turning from that side of your face to that side of your face. Don't, don't turn from the outside, turn from the inside, okay? Now that we have this facing the right way, we have to thicken and actually shape our S curl. So again, take your fingers, run them to the top, and you're gonna squeeze down a little bit. Squeeze your fingers together. You want that to be thick. You want the hair in that part of the spit curl to literally look as if it's laying flat. Now for the rest of it, grab a point on the bottom, right here. This is gonna be your intersection. That's where everything starts to curve. And with your right fingers, you're literally just going to pull it. You're going to pull it and shape it as much as you can. And if you do it just right, you get one of those. Now I'm going to pull to the, I'm going to move my head. I'm going to try to make sure you can see this. There we go. If you look, you can see the dimension of the curl. You can see how it comes out and over and it tails around right at the front. Now this is not a perfect S-type Reeve 80s curl that just barely graces over his eyebrow and comes to a perfect tail. Um, his hair was, I think for the top of his hair, it was at about three and a half to four inches and able to make that work. My hair's a little shorter than that, but to, again, your hairline matches with your face. So the hair length you may need may not be the same hair length as the others, but the ratio, will still be the same. Now that we have our curl done, um, we have to go into step four for some detail and some hairspray. But first, what we're gonna do before we get into any detail is we're gonna spray the curl, okay? Now, one last check to make sure the curl is where we want. A little trick, if you're having trouble getting it to lay flat, you can take your finger, hold on to the tip, and literally, you're just turning, okay? See so what happens when I let go? I'm pushing this again, make sure that's turning straight. That's exactly what we want. So for the hairspray, 
you don't want to just spray the curl all over the place and be done with it. You have to be very calculated and acute with it. So cover the eye directly under your curl. For me, it's going to be my right. We're just going to spray once from the left, forward, and from the right. I'm going to stand back a little bit. I don't want to get any hairspray on the camera here. And again, on the front, just a little bit. You don't need much. You already have gel, mousse, and wax in there. So hairspray doesn't have to be that much. But I will say that the curl is the first to go. So whenever, you, like I said, if you're in too hot of a situation and you don't add enough, when you do find a mistake, the curl is the first to tell you. So always make sure that you add plenty of product and plenty of wax to that curl. You don't want it to go anywhere. Now, before we add some detail, um, excuse me, before we add our final touch of hairspray to the rest, we're gonna give some detail. So that brings me back to this guy. And that also introduces us to our precision brush. The top of my hair is exactly where I want it to be. So right before I give it some hairspray, I'm gonna do just a little bit to it right here, but I'm not much. Right now I'm focusing on just getting some nice comb lines before this finally starts to settle. And again, I always follow the pattern of my hair. Pattern is important. The more and more your hair knows it's moving that way, the more it can move that way on its own. All right, upside down, like I mentioned, I'm just gonna pull this around. Keep the duck tail neat. All right, so the sides are done. Now for the front. Now, before I touch the front, I want to let you know that I'm not going to be using this brush, this comb much anymore. This guy has pretty much done his job. So unless something falls out of place, we're done with this. Now we're going to be using the round brush one last time, and that's because I would like this to be very smooth. Um, yeah, hold on a second. There we go. I'm going to use the precision brush actually to do that, but I kind of just see it a little bit. Forget I did that. The front of my coif here, even though it is holding up, if you can see, they're structurally a little bit apart. They're not really lined up with each other. I don't like to see that. So I'm going to fix that. But it's very lightly. I'm going to come up and push it back up, just like I did before. You don't have to worry about your curl this time because your curl has so much product in it, it's not going anywhere. So like I said, just a very light touch, very lightly. You don't want to start at the very bottom. You're going to start from maybe the top of the hair, because as I mentioned, the last thing you want is to disrupt the wax that's holding up your hair from when we applied in step three. Now that this is all nice and smooth, okay, I'm just going to very gently Make sure the back of the cloth is straight. And this is gonna take a little bit of getting used to, but once you get it, see, I, I combed over and then I pushed right back up. That's exactly what we want. Oh, see, I almost grabbed the curl there. There we go, nice save. That was a, that was a happy accident. Okay. Now, before I add the hairspray, I mentioned using the small precision brush. I'm a big fan of this thing, um, the small precision comb. I'm a real big fan of this. So I'm gonna hold it the same way as before, upside down. And if you notice, it's forming tighter lines. Now, that soft bristle um, brush with the brown handle, that does the same thing, but in this case, the small precision brush really just smooths everything out completely. So if you don't want that big teeth combed look from the sides of your hair, like you're pulling it back, like an old greaser, you could do it this way with the small precision brush instead. I like to opt for a complete smooth look all the way. I just leave a little bit of the teeth marks in front so you can see the shape of my cloth. 
but I usually like the sides to be very, very smooth. And with the, precision, with the precision brush, it really helps with that. Now our very last step, see this, I'm sweating a little bit. So the curl is trying to go back, the curl wants to do this, okay? So the hairspray will fix that. And the blow dryer will help as well. Um, blow drying is optional. I'm not gonna blow dry today, but if you wanna blow dry when you're done, it definitely helps. Spraying it again, just for good measure. There we go. That's exactly where we want it to go. Now for spraying our hair, we're gonna follow the same pattern. It's just like we were applying something, okay? So we're coming around, and we're following the pattern of our hair. Oh, by the way, uh, for everyone that is listening, um, Kelly or whoever is staying with me, um, I have someone that I'm expecting around like 6'10", 6'15". So once I finish and I answer a couple questions, I will be in. But this is being recorded, and I do plan on making a pre-recorded, video-edited version for YouTube. So don't worry, folks. Now, as I'm continuing to do, I'm spraying in the pattern of where my hair is going. The half circle, I'm coming around, right? I'm making a half circle for the front and going towards the back. Now, many people don't think about doing this, but for my case, I like to. I'm going to spray down the part because you want to make sure that part doesn't deteriorate and you want the hair at the roots of your part not to come apart or if you move around, you don't want them to go anywhere either. So always give this part a little bit of spray. Now, this is where we're at right now. The last thing we have to do is for step five, like I mentioned, we're going to grab that brush and we're going to add some shine. So for the brush, just very lightly, very, very lightly. Do not apply any pressure, just enough to where you can change the surface of your hair. That's it. Bring a little bit to the ducktail. Now, if it's quiet enough, you guys should be able to hear the sound of those bristles. You just want that very light grazing sound. That's all you want. See how smooth that's getting? Just light pressure. Okay. I'm going to polish off my duck tail just a little bit. Here, let me do it backwards. Polishing off the tail just a little bit. Okay. You can see that forming down the middle. If my hair was a little shorter, it would be a perfect duck tail, but you get the idea. Most styles for Superman, if the hair isn't perfectly short on the bottom, then um, it does kind of form into a slight V. Some artists have drawn them that way. It's up to you, however you want it to look. Before we add our last product, we need to just make sure everything is in working order because once we add this shine, that's it, okay? When we add the shine, we walk away. That means we're done and I'm leaving my hotel, con room, bedroom for a birthday party, I'm whatever. So just lightly make sure, go over with the brush, make sure there's no hairs out of place and everything is exactly where you want it. Your hair is starting to dry and we don't want to waste any more time. So this is a good time to double check everything before it's too late. So my curl is gonna do that a lot because like I said, I don't like how, this would be just a little bit longer, but most of the time the curl will sit just like that. My hair is just not cooperating with me today. Here, let me make that fold. I'm actually going to fold my hair, okay? See me press against that? There we go. It'll help stay a little bit better. Okay, for our last thing, the shine is pretty strong, so you don't need a lot. You're going to hold this only about six to eight inches away from your head, and you just need a mist. That's it. Don't add too much. Now, I'm not applying this according to pattern like I did everything else. This is the one thing that I will not be doing that with. You're just finding a section, making sure it's covered. 
obviously. Close your eyes. And hold your breath. That's very important. Hold your breath. And you don't want the hairspray or the gloss getting in your hair. All right. So we've applied our gloss. Everything's finished. Before you walk away, you have the option to blow dry your hair. I'm not going to be doing that today, but if you wanted to, you can. Some things that other people like to do is uh, they'll run a couple fingers along the bottom of their hairline, okay? Like literally just around your ears, around the bottom of your hairline, and then take that little bit of product that you got, bring them along your eyebrows, make them nice and smooth. And that's pretty much it. If everything goes well and the steps come one after the other and the product and your pattern and styling your hair comes into fruition, you get something pretty similar to this. And that about wraps it up, everybody. Do we have any questions? Hey, Charlie, uh, one quick question. Um, you, I, you haven't seen me that much, but I did get my hair cut about a week and a half ago. Yeah, I could see it. And wound up taking it off way more than I intended to. So, I mean, if, if I was in Metropolis right now, I'd be way more upset about my hair. But um, whenever you go to the barber, um, what do you usually ask for? Um, I ask for a faded pompadour. Faded pompadour, all right. Faded. I ask for a faded pompadour. I tell them where the line of my hair is. Usually want the bangs to come down right about your eyebrow, your eyes. And then you want it to slowly fade back to about maybe an inch or so, maybe a little more, maybe a little less from the sides of your hair and also to the back. All right. So, so you, you, get very, you get just very specific. Fade. Okay. Yep. Just a gradual fade. Um, like I said, tell them you're going to style it into a pompadour and you want to make sure that you can perfectly form it and it goes according to uh, how the hair should taper. Don't ask for it tapered. Don't ask for it cut with bangs. You just want a normal pompadour cut fit. Um, bringing pictures of some greasers, bringing some pictures of uh, Christopher Reeve or your favorite Superman, that will also help because hairstylists and barbers, they know what hair looks like when it's styled. So they'll be able to figure out what that needs to look like unstyled. You yep. know what I'm saying? Well, and what, what gets me is, because uh, usually what I'll do, I'll do a quick Google search on my phone and I do like classic Hollywood 1940s men's hairstyles and I'll show them two or three that I like um but this last time I mean and, and part of it I, I can't because this guy's done really great uh work before on me um so I can't completely blame him but I, I usually I do about a quarter inch medium fade and okay. this time I asked I was like well can we do eighth because this always grows in way more and I'm having to trim it myself and this time he went nuts because I know one other thing uh, for people who may go on or for guys who may go and ask for a pompadour, make sure they're doing a classic like greaser pompadour, not that new style where it's shaved up one side of your head. Uh, yeah, that's called a razor fade. You don't want that. Right. Well, but I mean, a lot of hairstylists are calling it a pompadour now. Ooh. There's yeah. one. There's one that I went to for 20 years. She's a sweet lady. She does good work, but she also. Part, Part of the she lives in my hometown, so it's ridiculous for me to wait three months and drive four hours to go see her. But on top of that, she she would generally do what she wanted. Um, but I, I do know that the definition of a pompadour has changed, so I just I wanted to throw that out there too. But I was kind of curious what other people asked for because again, I you know mine is always hit and miss. Sure, sure. Um, also, what I recommend is when you're looking for someone to cut your hair. Find a comic book fan. Find someone who knows Superman, who loves Superman. If you're not getting your hair cut by a nerd, you're not doing it right. And I could not say that enough. So, I have never thought about that before. That makes complete sense, though. That's I awesome. have someone I talk to the whole time that loves comic books as much as we do. And sometimes we forget he has someone else waiting on him. It's beautiful. <laughs> That's exactly who you want. You want a buddy who knows how to cut hair. And he'll because they're already familiar with you being a comic book fan and a cosplayer, they're already going to know that you're going to have details. They won't get mad at all the precautions and all the little questions because they okay. know that's what you need to get your hair looking right. Well, I finally got brave. I mean, I'm, I'm sitting here in a costume now, but for the most part, 
most of my life, I've taken the, the concept of a, a secret identity pretty seriously. And uh, so this is the first time sitting in a barber chair that I actually said, it was like, look, I, I just want a classic Superman. And then I got this instead. But again, that's partly my fault for probably wanting to go too short. But anyway, I'm going to, I'm going to work with the guy. No, yeah, and you still have a lot of possibilities there. Um, for your hair, obviously it's a little short. You can still rock a classic C curl and just follow some of the other steps where you can still use them for shorter hair. You won't be able to do much of a duck tail, but you could definitely make use of the mousse and the gel and the hairspray and the serum. I don't think you're gonna need much wax because your hair's not that long. So you shouldn't have too much to worry about. So I hope that helps you. No, thanks. Um, if everybody, uh, if that's about it, um, do we have any more questions? I got to get ready for my company. Anyone last minute questions? And as I said, uh, they've been very kind enough to record this for me so I can go over this later and repost it and I'll even make an edited proper version with the video crew later on this year when I have more time. So um, some of these products I actually use that I want to finish with. I use just normal products. I actually like to use certain hair products that make my hair look black when we're done like black, black, and you don't even have to dye it. So I'll show you how I do that in that edited video later on. But all right, excellent. that's it, everybody. Uh, thank you so very, very much for watching. And for all of you that watched live, thank you for being here with me. For all of you that are watching the recording later, thank you for being here later with me. And I really, really appreciate it. Big hugs. Love you guys. Love you too. Kelly, are we good? Does everything sound all right? Make sure we're okay. Whoever our whoever our phone host is. Uh, that may be me. Um, I see that I can pause the recording. I'm gonna go ahead and pause the recording here. Oh yeah, that is you. Okay, cool. Um.